All right. <clears throat> so gives us great pleasure to introduce Alan. Uh, Alan's a Many Hats Club mainstay, a uh, popular figure, uh, security researcher, Irishman with a fantastic hirsute thing going on facially and, and on top of his head. Um, he's here to talk about open source intelligence and all that kind of stuff. So Alan, over to you, mate. Good luck. Thank you for the little introduction there, Mike. Uh, so as Mike said, I'm Alan. Um, my talk today is about uh, my journey into OSINT and, and InfoSec in general. It's a bit of a traditional journey, but it's one that I feel I'd like to talk about. So first of all, who am I? Uh, my handle is on the blank. There's my face to go with it. Uh, as you'll learn later on in the talk, my name's Alan O'Reilly and I'm a student at TU Dublin Blanchestown. I'm also a member of the Many Hats Club OSINT team who last week won their third uh, Trace Labs CTF. So what are the objectives of this talk? What will you walk away knowing from this talk? Well, you learn a bit about my journey into college, uh, my journey into OSINT, and I'm also gonna give a little bit of a beginner's guide into OSINT because I feel there's kind of that step missing uh, in industry, how do you start doing this and what's the uh, easiest, uh, what's the best tips you could give for beginners? But first of all, how did I get here? Where, how, how did I start into InfoSec? Well, surprisingly, cybersecurity wasn't my first choice when it comes to college. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, in Ireland, we use what's known as the CAO or Central Applications Office. And what that does, it's a non-profit organization who handles college applications. And they're coming under a lot of scrutiny right now with the uncertainty of the Leaving Cert examinations, which determine the points you get for going into college. Um, with the uncertainty of the Leaving Cert, it's doing a whole number on the uh, Leaving Cert students and there's a lot of questions being asked as to how they will be protected and are they, you know, are they gonna struggle trying to get into college now? But to go back to my first point, cybersecurity wasn't my first choice when it came to the CAO, right? Uh, for those unfamiliar with it, you list your college preferences from one to 10. And my first option was actually computer applications in DCU and second was computer science and software engineering at Minish University. In fact, the course that I'm in, uh, when I originally filled out the CAO, was my 10th choice. It, it, it was not my first choice whatsoever, nor was it my second. It was all the way down at the bottom of the list. And that was digital forensics and cybersecurity at ITB. Now, thankfully, I did change that in the change of mind uh, for the CAO and bumped that up into third. But that just goes to show, you know, if you're an Irish student looking at this and you're worried that you're not going to get what you want, sometimes what you get is what you actually want um, because I probably would have dropped out of those first two courses. Like how I kind of wanted to drop out of the uh, course that I got into at the start. Because uh, it wasn't what I expected whatsoever. Uh, I got dropped into a general first two years. And they were the most boring two years of my life. It was not what I asked for at all. I joined the, the course to do cybersecurity and not to learn how to use Java for the 10th time. That, and I was that way until I got to Clubs and Societies sign-up day in the college. And I would call it like it was yesterday, right? We were all herded into a hall. And societies had set up their tables. And there was this big crowd around the table. And when I went over to examine why, they had handcuffs on the table. And if you got too close, you'd end up handcuffed to the table and from a lockpick and that was the best feeling ever when you had to pick the lock and that was uh, a society called hacker suck who i have been a part of since then and it's really helped me uh stay into college 
So that's, that's how I got into college. Then years have passed. I've made friends, made friends online, joined the Many Hats Club. And then one day, stuff started to get real. So I received DM from a person that a suspicious message had been posted on a Discord server. I won't go into details for sake of privacy. But me and a group of people, we then gathered information on it, on the server that they posted, and that information was then relayed to the authorities. Then about two weeks after the fact, we got a report from someone else uh, unrelated that a kid had been arrested in the state that they had posted the message in with a gun in their backpack. Now, to this day, I do not know if that was relating to the information that we had given, but I like to think that it might be. But uh, as I mentioned at the start, um, I am part of the Olsen team for the Many Hats Club, and we uh, took part in the Trace Lab CTF last week. And that is one thing that I've been loving doing the past while. I was originally selected for the team back in January of last year. However, due to family commitments, I was unable to participate. And we've now gone on to uh, win three times in a row. And this is actually where I learned out, uh, learned about Ocean for Good. And that is the likes of Badass Army and Instant Lives Foundation, Trace Labs, you know, all those organizations who use Ocean for the good of people instead of the bad. But uh, as I did promise at the start of the talk, uh, I will be talking about how to get into OSINT, how I got into OSINT. So one of the, I basically class him as a mentor, uh, Cyber Viking, uh, I stupidly asked for him to uh, do a little, have a little bit of fun, right? So this was a picture that me, Cyber Viking, and a couple of other people took. Uh, that's me, Circle Dread, and that is at Trinity Bar in Dublin, which we took with a webcam that is publicly available. Um, and there's me then walking later uh, down by the GPO in O'Connell Street. All right. Now, this went on for a couple of weeks. He was trying to figure out where I lived. All right. Here, he's then tracking me going through Blanchardstown. Now, I love this one, right? This picture is captioned, he still doesn't know. I knew because he fell over a stand like a minute before taking this photo. So, uh, yeah, I knew he was following me then. And uh, I was actually leading him down some interesting aisles. <laughs> And uh, ultimately, he then got the bus route that I was on, and uh, he managed to get a good idea as to where I lived. Uh, so what can be done to remedy this? Well, I would say you could have good OPSEC, but sure, it doesn't matter how good your OPSEC is, there's always going to be other people taking photos. Um, so Cyber Viking will actually be talking a bit more about that side in his talk on the Red Track uh, tonight. So, lastly, Olsen for beginners, where would I suggest starting off? Well, there's three main parts that I like to talk about, about Olsen for beginners. That's Google dorking, enumeration, and geoint or imint. Uh, geoint is uh, geophysical intelligence, and imint is image intelligence. All right, so first of all, let's talk about Google dorking. It's easy, and if you was right, it could be very, very powerful. So I gave my information at the start because what's the best person to use for uh, examples other than yourself? Because you can give yourself consent. And if you use in title on the blank, you'll find my name. You'll find that I'm Irish by my YouTube channel. And you'll find my college very fast. So that's why I gave that information at the start as opposed to self-doxing myself. And this 
is powerful uh, when doing a wind down from the Trace Labs CTF, uh, which we've done the past few times. We've had people come onto the server for a little wind down just to chat uh, uh, strategies. Uh, we always mention, well, did you try Google dorking that? They always say no, but you know, you can get, you can actually pivot off of a Google Dork to family through weird ways, but you know, nine times out of 10, it, it does work. And then you also have enumeration. Now enumeration is uh, getting more information basically. It's handy, uh, it could be automated, now there is this tool that I'd recommend for enumerating uh, profiles under a certain username. That's called Sherlock. And what that does, it makes it into a lovely little handy uh, list. So again, I use my own information here because it's easiest to get uh, consent off of. You now here you see all the list of uh, profiles that I have. And again, you can access this, these are live. Uh, please don't hack, no hacky. Um, but yeah, you, you can get a lot of information off of doing enumeration. Because right? from this you can tell, I like anime, I play chess. I at one point played Fortnite, that's a new one. Uh, Roblox false positive, which is happens a lot, you know, for Spotify. Yeah, you can tell a lot from a person's uh, online presence. And again, this is something that people really, really don't think about. Now, it can be the make all or break all of a uh, search when it comes to Trace Labs. Because again, it's more profiles. It could be a weaker uh, pro uh, OPSEC uh, based profile. You know, you could have an address, you could have a phone number. That phone number could still be active. It could be doing pinging off stuff. You never know. And that is why you should always just find profiles. Uh, run the likes of Sherlock, enumerate all the profiles that you can. Then manually check and see if they are actually belonging to the people. And lastly, uh, GeoWind. So when searching this, it was hard to find a good example. I, and I kind of made my own example here at the end through the help of uh, people on Twitter. Uh, so the CIA uh, basically summarized GeoWind as, where am I? What are natural and man-made? And what does this place look? like now fear after an event uh, they were not specific about event so i am worried what that means and uh you know what what's the talk without a little bit of a uh example so one more for road let's do one last example and twitter is a great place for these examples right uh if you search hashtag, hashtag osund Nine times out of ten, you're going to get someone posting an OSIN challenge. And this was a interesting one. This had been the first one I had done in a while, so I was a little bit rusty going into it. And really, uh, I had thought this might be London, but I don't know London at all. So I had to do a little bit of work, and eventually GeoIn comes into it in the end, right? So going through his Twitter to try and find information, we find this. A lovely site while walking to work at, well, I've redacted it, but it's up there. Um, so we get information from this, right? He's walking to work and um, he's crossing what turns out to be the Tower Bridge in London. First of all, I should probably verify that. Here I am at a place. I'm trying to uh, figure out what way it is because, again, I don't know London. And he turns out is going northbound uh, to uh, London, uh, up London. So going back to our original photo, we need to pick out key points here to help 
search. So we clearly have a restaurant. It's an interesting corner building and there's huge balconies, right? Uh, from the style of building, uh, from the light on the buildings even, we can tell that there, it's uh, later in the day by the uh, shadows. Uh, we can see the building further in the back is lit up as opposed to the building in the foreground. So the uh, sun's not above. So it is a uh, afternoon picture, which means we're heading southbound. Now just searching about until we find a building that matches it. Uh, we end up going to Ju Duchess Walk. And we find a restaurant called by Chloe, which might be that restaurant that we see there. And uh, we can kind of make out the sharp corner that we have in our uh, in the right of the image here. We have the balconies that are prominent on our left. And of course, the best way to find out is to go online and verify. So we jumped down in Google Maps and that was the exact location as to where that picture was taken. So to summarize on that, um, you know, if you're looking to get into OSINT, the best way to do it is through these Twitter challenges. You build up a collection of methodologies, you build up a collection of tools, uh, you learn some tools work better than other tools, you also learn how to do a bit of uh, GeoInt and ImInt. Um, but for further uh, resources, uh, I've got I would recommend these three links for resources. Uh, so the first one is relating to Google Dorking. Uh, the second one is a fantastic course by Robert Volker. Uh, he actually has three intelligent intelligence analyst uh, certifications. Uh, I've done the first one myself, but uh, unfortunately, since the time of me doing it and this talk happening, he has him uh, put on a cost. I think it's twenty dollars for the talk, uh, for the course, but it's a great course. There are three of them altogether, though, and uh, there's another course that I would highly recommend. It's the bestseller according to Udemy uh, by Dean O, and it is a OSINT uh, course from beginner to advanced. Uh, I reached out to him and he thankfully gave a coupon code, as you can see in the uh, link there, which will be available on request, or I'll leave it up for a few more seconds for someone to screenshot it. And that coupon code will bring it down to $35 instead of the $50. So before I go into questions, which if people do have questions, do leave them in, in the uh, Twitch chat. Um, yeah, to get into OSINT, really just practice, practice, practice. You know, you can't do more than practice. Um, and so I lost my train of thought there. <laughs> um, yeah, you're good, so, dude. You're doing great. Thanks. Um, yeah. So, is there any questions? So, I've got a quick question for you. Go on. Um, when we did Bake on One, we had um, Viking and Rag on doing a talk about OSINT. <laughs> yeah. And I asked the question to them, and I'm going to ask it to you, which was, a lot of people see OSINT as possibly incredibly invasive and it's about nicking things from cameras and all that kind of stuff. What are the positive applications of it in your head, Alan? Um, how can we turn this idea that things are invasive and intrusive into something good? So we do have the OSINT for Good initiative where we do see the likes of Instant, uh, Instant Lives Foundation and Badass Army who help against, uh, who help take down revenge porn. And we also have the likes of Trace Labs who 
use this oh send uh the information given by people online readily available for anyone to look up um and they do use that information for good yeah uh, i don't know if that really answers your question i think it does i think a lot of people see a cct camera and assume oh the the man is watching me and all that kind of stuff but i i heard a tale about um somebody preventing a suicide actually because yeah. they were able, able to um, watch an individual sat on a bridge that was pr uh, presumably contemplating killing themselves and and managed to prevent it happening which is kind of amazing yeah i heard of that one actually uh but like cctv cameras generally tend to be open so we'll go back um where is it just hold on for a second yeah cctv cameras tend to be open and it leads to brilliant uh, shots like this yeah. where we got a group photo down the busy street of temple bar and we we're just standing there for like a minute waiting for the camera to catch up and yeah it's one of the funnier pictures to show people and you know as i said cctv cameras tend to be open and yeah. i think that's more of a case for the sake of other people kind of crowdsourcing uh security yeah yeah gonna try and get through a few questions here so what are your best resources for learning osint i think you probably you put a few links in there anyway yeah and there's another one that i didn't put in but that'd be sourcing.games and that is one of the better ones that i have um been told um so it's basically a simulated osint environment you'll be given the headers of dodgy emails and told to find out where this came from it's a really great simulation uh, mm -hmm. of uh, doing Ausund or yeah. you'll be given uh, dummy github accounts and told to get the password uh, the email used to register for this uh, get account yeah no fair enough I guess uh, Matt LeBraid came up with a, a secondary question, which was around tooling. Um, is it Google Docking? Is it Shodan? Is it you know finding cameras that are online that you can easily get access to? I mean, what works for you? Uh, well, Shodan's pretty interesting uh, when you use it because you can filter specifically for webcams, and. Um, you know, if you're trying to find webcams, uh, Shodan would be the easier way to do it. But if you're, so you can find a ton of them in Ireland. But if you're using Shodan for these, you really only find churches, where <laughs> most of Dublin uh, is actually openly available. Uh, well, churches, and I think I've seen like a farm or two, uh, <laughs> which you know doesn't help the stereotype. But yeah, that, that's what I've been seeing. But you do uh, live in a fairly gentle country, uh, which is mostly country, to be fair. Yeah, well, I'm surprised that uh, my Zoom's so smooth because I'm actually in a rural part of the country right now. <laughs> so I'm, I'm actually surprised I have smooth connection. So let's see about a couple more questions. Let's see what we've got. Right. Oh, here's one. I like this one. Um, is Multigo worth doing? um personally no okay explain. um it's great for large uh investigations if you're in a three-letter organization it'd be absolutely great but i reckon it have an in-house version of Maltego. Mm. uh unless you're doing a large investigation which spans off into about 10 people i would not recommend it just adds to I don't know, make it over complicated mm. um but it could uh people's mileage varies uh people may find it better to visualize the data but i've used it before and i was not a huge fan of it okay yeah fair enough right we are done alan <clears throat> so thank you very much for that 
Um, no problem. Thank Nathan. you for having me on. No, absolutely perfect. Brilliant, mate. Um, if we didn't get all your questions, I do apologise. Hopefully, I'll maybe get on the Twitch and answer a few directly. Um, uh, yeah. We're going to gap off now for a, a couple of minutes, and then we're going to have Sulphur up, and uh, Stu will introduce Sulphur. So thank you very much. Cheers, Alan. Thank you. <laughs>